Large-scale transport operations are a symphony of precision and ingenuity, where colossal structures embark on epic journeys to new homes. These awe-inspiring endeavors push the boundaries of human capability, showcasing the extraordinary feats of engineering, logistics, and sheer determination required to relocate these gargantuan structures. Join us as we delve into the most epic transport operations in history. Ocean Farm 1, a colossal fish farm's voyage. Ocean Farm 1, a massive offshore fish farm constructed by Norwegian company Salmar, embarked on a remarkable journey from China to Norway. Measuring an impressive 361 feet wide and 223 feet high, this behemoth is designed to withstand earthquakes up to a magnitude of 12. To put its size into perspective, Ocean Farm 1 boasts a volume of 8.8 .8 million cubic feet, equivalent to approximately 3,000 average-sized houses. The advanced technology incorporated into this floating fish farm is truly astounding. With around 20,000 sensors monitoring and feeding the fish, Ocean Farm 1 achieves an unprecedented level of automation. The farm also features a unique 360-degree revolving gate system, which efficiently cleans the fish nets and directs the shoals of fish. Transported by the Hua Hai Long Vessel, Ocean Farm 1 began its voyage at the Qingdao City Shipyard in China's Shandong Province and concluded in Froya, Norway. Remarkably, this floating fish factory has the capacity to mature up to 1.5 million fish within a mere 14 months, solidifying its position as one of the world's most productive fish farms. The Bullwinkle Oil Platform a giant's journey to the Gulf. When it comes to offshore oil platforms, they don't come much bigger than Bullwinkle. Standing over 1,700 feet tall and weighing 77,000 tons, this massive structure was one of the largest man-made objects ever to be transported across the open ocean. Built in the 1980s by Shell Oil Company, Bullwinkle was designed to operate in the deep waters of the Gulf of Mexico, extracting oil and gas from reserves that had previously been inaccessible. But before it could begin its work, it had to be transported from its construction site in Texas to its final destination, a journey that would take several weeks and cover over 1,000 miles of open water. To accomplish this feat, Shell enlisted the help of some of the world's leading experts in heavy cargo transport. The platform was loaded onto a specially designed barge, which was then towed by a fleet of tugboats across the Gulf of Mexico. Along the way, the convoy encountered everything from rough seas to hurricanes, but thanks to the skill and expertise of the transport team, Bullwinkle arrived at its destination safely and on schedule. Once in place, Bullwinkle was anchored to the seafloor using a system of massive steel cables and concrete pilings. It was a complex and challenging operation, but one that was essential to the platform's long-term stability and success. Over the next several decades, Bullwinkle would go on to produce millions of barrels of oil and gas, helping to fuel the American economy and support the livelihoods of countless workers and their families. The Propane Splitter a colossal cargo's Canadian odyssey. In 2019, an enormous propane splitter, measuring 315 feet in length and weighing nearly 900 tons, embarked on a remarkable journey across Canada. This gargantuan piece of industrial equipment was transported from its place of manufacture to its new home at the Interpipeline Petrochemical Development Project in Alberta. The sheer size and weight of the propane splitter posed significant challenges for transportation. Rather than disassembling the equipment and moving it into smaller sections, the decision was made to transport the splitter in one colossal piece. As the splitter traversed the Canadian landscape, it left onlookers in awe of its immense size and the logistical feat unfolding before their eyes. However, the journey was not without its disruptions, as the slow-moving convoy caused significant delays and inconvenience for motorists and commuters along the route. Due to its size and weight, the propane splitter could only travel at a sluggish pace, with the entire journey taking an astonishing four days to complete. This resulted in temporary road closures, detours, and frustrated travelers who found themselves caught in the wake of this massive undertaking. The Muon G2, a magnetic marvel's epic journey. 
In a remarkable feat of transportation, a 50-foot-wide, 15-ton magnet was moved from the Brookhaven National Laboratory in Long Island, New York, to Fermilab, a research facility located in the suburbs of Chicago, Illinois. This massive electromagnet, a critical component in an experiment designed to study subatomic particles called muons, creates a magnetic field, an astonishing 300,000 times stronger than the Earth's. In 2013, the Muon G2 embarked on an epic journey from the Brookhaven National Laboratory in New York to the Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory Fermilab in Illinois, covering a distance of over 3,200 miles by land and sea. To ensure the safe passage of the Muon G2, a team of experts spent months planning every detail of the journey. The magnet was carefully loaded onto a specially designed truck, which would transport it over land at a speed of just 10 miles per hour with a police escort to ensure a smooth and uninterrupted journey. For the first leg of the trip, the Muon G2 traveled from New York to the port of Shoreham, where it was loaded onto a barge for the journey down the East Coast. The barge sailed around the Florida Peninsula and up the Mississippi River, covering a distance of over 3,000 miles in just over a month. Once it arrived in Illinois, the Muon G2 was loaded back onto a truck for the final leg of the journey to Fermilab. The last few miles were perhaps the most challenging, as the truck had to navigate narrow roads and tight turns to reach its final destination. Throughout the journey, the Muon G2 was constantly monitored by a team of experts who used a variety of sensors and instruments to ensure that the magnet remained stable and intact. The team even had to adjust the truck's suspension to account for changes in temperature and humidity along the way. Finally, after a journey of over six weeks, the Muon G2 arrived at Fermilab, where it was carefully unloaded and installed in its new home. The magnet is now being used in a groundbreaking experiment that could unlock some of the deepest secrets of the universe and pave the way for a new era of scientific discovery. The Asta Hanstein Spar, a floating Colossus's North Sea voyage. The Asta Hanstein Spar is a massive floating production storage and offloading FPSO unit that was built to extract natural gas from the depths of the Norwegian Sea. Measuring over 650 feet tall and weighing in at a staggering 46,000 tons, the Asta Hanstein is one of the largest and most complex FPSOs ever built. In 2017, the Asta Hanstein embarked on a journey of epic proportions, traveling over 13,000 miles from the Hyundai Heavy Industries shipyard in South Korea to its final destination in the Norwegian Sea, off the coast of Norway. To transport the massive structure, a specialized heavy transport vessel called the Dockwise Vanguard was employed. The Dockwise Vanguard is the largest semi-submersible heavy lift ship in the world, capable of carrying cargoes up to 100,000 tons and measuring over 900 feet long. The journey began in April 2017, when the Asta Hanstein was loaded onto the Dockwise Vanguard in South Korea. The loading process alone took several days, as the FPSO had to be carefully maneuvered onto the deck of the Vanguard using a complex system of ballast tanks and hydraulic jacks. Once loaded, the Dockwise Vanguard set sail for Norway, navigating through some of the world's busiest shipping lanes and treacherous waters. The journey took over two months to complete, with the Vanguard traveling at an average speed of just five knots to ensure the safety and stability of its precious cargo. Along the way, the Asta Hanstein encountered a variety of challenges, from rough seas and strong winds to unpredictable weather patterns and navigational hazards. Throughout the journey, a team of experts worked around the clock to monitor the FPSO and ensure that it remained secure and stable on the deck of the Vanguard. Finally, in June 2017, the Asta Hanstein arrived at its destination in the Norwegian Sea, where it was carefully unloaded from the Dockwise Vanguard and towed to its final location. The FPSO is now being used to extract natural gas from the Asta Hanstein field, which lies beneath over 4,000 feet of water and is considered one of the harshest and most challenging environments in the world. Endeavor's last voyage, a shuttle's journey through L.A., the Space Shuttle. Endeavour, a marvel of human ingenuity and engineering, had a career that most spacecraft could only dream of. It flew 25 missions and spent 299 days in orbit, 
But in 2011, Endeavor retired from active service, and its final mission was to become a museum piece at the California Science Center. In October 2012, Endeavor set off on its last great adventure, a two-day crawl through the streets of Los Angeles from LAX to its final resting place. But this was no ordinary road trip. Endeavor is a massive spacecraft, measuring 122 feet long, with a wingspan of 78 feet and weighing a whopping 170,000 pounds. Moving such a large object through the busy streets of LA was a logistical nightmare. The route was carefully planned, with hundreds of trees being removed and power lines being temporarily diverted to make way for the shuttle's massive bulk. Crowds lined the streets, eager to catch a glimpse of this incredible piece of history as it made its way through their neighborhoods. Endeavor was transported on a special 160-wheel carrier, which moved at a glacial pace of just two miles per hour. The carrier had to make several stops along the way to adjust the weight distribution and avoid obstacles like bridges and sharp turns. The journey was not without its challenges. At one point, the carrier became stuck on a narrow street, and crews had to work overnight to free it. But despite the obstacles, Endeavor finally arrived at its destination, where it was greeted by cheering crowds and a sense of awe at the incredible feat of engineering and logistics that had just taken place. The James Webb Space Telescope, a journey to the final frontier. The James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, is one of the most advanced and powerful space observatories ever built. Designed to peer deep into the cosmos and study the earliest galaxies and stars, the JWST is a marvel of modern engineering and scientific innovation. But before the telescope could begin its groundbreaking mission, it had to embark on a journey of its own. A long and complex voyage from its manufacturing facility in California to its launch site in French Guiana, on the northern coast of South America. The journey began in September 2021, when the JWST was carefully packed into a custom-built shipping container called the Space Telescope Transporter for Air, Road, and Sea Stars. The stars, which measured 110 feet long, 15 feet wide, and 18 feet tall, was specifically designed to protect the delicate telescope during its long journey. From California, the STARS was transported by truck to the nearby port of Los Angeles, where it was loaded onto a specially equipped cargo ship. The ship then set sail for the Panama Canal, where it navigated through the narrow locks and waterways before emerging into the Caribbean Sea. From there, the ship continued on to the port of Kourou in French Guiana, where the JWST was carefully unloaded and transported by road to its final destination, the Guiana Space Center a sprawling facility operated by the European Space Agency. Throughout its journey, the JWST was closely monitored by a team of engineers and technicians who worked around the clock to ensure that the telescope remained safe and secure. The team used a variety of specialized equipment, including sensors, cameras, and environmental control systems to maintain the optimal conditions for the telescope during its voyage. After months of careful planning and preparation, the JWST finally arrived at its launch site on October 2021. There, it underwent final testing and assembly before being launched into space on December 25, 2021, a Christmas gift to the scientific community and a new era of discovery for humanity. The Wind Turbine Blade – A Perilous Ascent in China's Mountains in February 2023, a team of workers in China undertook a treacherous mission to transport a massive wind turbine blade to the top of a mountain in the country's remote Yunnan province. The blade, measuring 250 feet long and weighing 19 tons, was part of a new wind farm project designed to help China meet its ambitious renewable energy targets. The journey began at the base of the mountain where the blade was carefully loaded onto a specially designed truck equipped with a hydraulic lifting system. The truck then began its slow and perilous ascent up the narrow and winding mountain road with steep drops of thousands of feet on either side. As the truck climbed higher and higher, the road became increasingly treacherous with hairpin turns and sheer cliffs that tested the skills and nerves of the drivers and workers. At times, the blade itself seemed to defy gravity, 
swaying and wobbling precariously as it navigated the tight corners and sharp bends. To make matters worse, the team had to contend with extreme weather conditions, including heavy snowfall and biting winds that threatened to knock the blade off course at any moment. The workers, clad in heavy winter gear and equipped with specialized safety equipment, had to work quickly and carefully to keep the blade on track and avoid any accidents or mishaps. Despite the challenges, the team persevered, inching the blade closer and closer to its final destination at the top of the mountain. The journey took over two weeks to complete, with the workers battling the elements and the terrain every step of the way. Finally, after a grueling and exhausting climb, the blade reached the summit, where it was carefully unloaded and installed onto the waiting wind turbine tower. The workers celebrated their incredible achievement knowing that they had just completed one of the most challenging and dangerous transportation missions in recent memory. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. In a remarkable display of engineering prowess, the Buchanan Mansion, a 125-year-old brick house weighing approximately 300 tons, was carefully hoisted and transported to a new location five miles away. Built in the late 19th century, this architectural gem features intricate details and a facade that harkens back to a time when craftsmanship was highly valued. As the neighborhood around the mansion evolved, the decision was made to relocate the structure to a more suitable site. This ambitious undertaking required the expertise of a skilled team of engineers and construction professionals who developed a comprehensive plan to move the mansion in its entirety. The process began by meticulously lifting the mansion onto a series of hydraulic jacks, which slowly and precisely raised the structure onto a convoy of wheeled vehicles. This delicate operation required the efforts of 20 crew members and took over an hour to complete, ensuring that the mansion was securely positioned for its journey. Thankfully, the route to the mansion's new location was free of obstacles such as low-clearance bridges, which could have posed significant challenges. After a long journey, the Buchanan Mansion arrived at its new site unscathed. It was gently lowered onto a freshly laid foundation, marking the beginning of a new chapter in the mansion's storied history. What are your thoughts on this epic journey? Let us know in the comments. The U-505 Submarine, a historic voyage within museum walls. When you think of moving a submarine, you probably imagine a complex operation involving ships, cranes, and a whole lot of water. But surprisingly, one of the most remarkable submarine moves in history took place entirely on land, within the walls of a museum. That's exactly what happened in 2004, when the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago decided to relocate the historic German submarine U-505 to a new exhibit space. The U-505, which was captured by the U.S. Navy during World War II, had been a popular exhibit at the museum since 1954. But after 50 years, it was time for an upgrade. Moving the 700-ton, 252-foot-long submarine was no easy feat. It required a team of experts, a lot of careful planning, and some seriously heavy-duty equipment. The first step was to lift the submarine using a system of hydraulic jacks and steel beams. This allowed the team to position a series of dollies underneath the sub, which would be used to roll it to its new location. Once the submarine was securely positioned on the dollies, the real work began. The team had to carefully guide the massive vessel through the museum's winding corridors and exhibit spaces, navigating tight turns and narrow doorways along the way. It was a slow and painstaking process, with the submarine moving at a speed of just a few feet per hour. But despite the challenges, the move was a success. After several days of careful maneuvering, the U-505 arrived at its new home, where it was gently lowered onto a new set of steel beams and concrete supports. The entire operation took place without a single scratch or dent to the historic submarine. The Sky Bridge, a landmark's lofty journey in Hong Kong. When it comes to moving massive structures, few companies have the expertise and equipment to match Mamoet, a Dutch firm that specializes in engineered heavy lifting and transport. And when the Hong Kong International Airport needed to install a new bridge connecting its terminal buildings, they knew just who to call. The Sky Bridge, as it's known, is an engineering marvel in itself. 
Measuring 650 feet long and weighing 5,100 tons, it's one of the longest and heaviest structures of its kind in the world. But getting it into place was no easy task, even for the experts at Mamoe. The first challenge was transporting the bridge to the airport site. The structure was so large that it had to be built in sections and transported on a fleet of specially designed trucks and trailers. Once on site, the sections were carefully lifted and assembled using a combination of cranes and hydraulic jacks. But the real test came when it was time to install the bridge between the terminal buildings. The sky bridge had to be lifted to a height of over 100 feet and then carefully lowered into place with just inches of clearance on either side. It was a delicate operation that required precision, skill, and nerves of steel. To make matters worse, the installation had to take place in the middle of a busy airport, with flights taking off and landing just a few hundred feet away. The Mamoe team had to work around the clock to minimize disruptions and ensure that the project stayed on schedule. In the end, the Sky Bridge was successfully installed, thanks to the hard work and dedication of the Mamoe team. Today, it serves as a vital link between the airport's terminal buildings, allowing passengers to move quickly and easily from one area to another. The world's largest evaporator, a record-breaking journey in Saudi Arabia. When it comes to desalination projects, bigger is almost always better. And when the Yanbu 3 desalination plant in Saudi Arabia needed a new evaporator, they didn't just go big, they went record-breaking. The evaporator in question is a behemoth by any standard, measuring over 400 feet long, 100 feet wide, and 30 feet tall. It weighs a staggering 5,736 tons, the equivalent of more than 1,000 Asian elephants. And transporting it from its manufacturing site in South Korea to its new home in Saudi Arabia was no small feat. Enter Dongbang Transport Logistics, a South Korean firm that specializes in heavy cargo transport. With a fleet of specially designed vehicles and a team of experienced engineers, Dongbang was uniquely qualified to take on the challenge of moving the world's largest evaporator. The journey began at the manufacturing site in South Korea, where the evaporator was carefully loaded onto a massive ship using a system of hydraulic jacks and steel beams. From there, it set sail for the port of Yanbu, a journey that took several weeks and covered thousands of miles of open ocean. Once in Yanbu, the evaporator was transferred to a fleet of specialized trucks and trailers for the final leg of its journey to the desalination plant. Navigating the narrow roads and tight turns of the Saudi Arabian desert was no easy task, but the Dongbang team was up to the challenge. In the end, the evaporator arrived at its destination safe and sound, thanks to the skill and expertise of the Dongbang team. And with its installation at the Yanbu 3 plant, it set a new world record for the largest evaporator ever transported, a feat that is unlikely to be surpassed anytime soon. Today, the Yanbu 3 desalination plant is one of the largest and most advanced facilities of its kind in the world, capable of producing millions of gallons of fresh water each day. And while most people will never see the massive evaporator that makes it all possible, those in the industry know that it represents a true milestone in the history of heavy cargo transport. The Steam Generator, a massive move for a massive machine. When it comes to power plant equipment, they don't come much bigger than steam generators. These massive machines are essential components of many modern power plants, using heat from burning fossil fuels or nuclear reactions to generate steam that drives turbines and generates electricity. So when a new steam generator needed to be transported from its manufacturing site to a power plant in New Jersey, it was no small undertaking. The generator in question was a behemoth, measuring over 120 feet long and weighing in at over 4,000 tons. To transport such a massive piece of equipment, a specialized team of engineers and heavy haul experts was assembled. The generator was loaded onto a custom-built barge equipped with a system of hydraulic jacks and steel support beams designed to keep the generator level and stable during transport. From there, the barge set off on a journey that would take it down the Hudson River, a trip that required careful planning and coordination to ensure the safety of both the generator and the surrounding environment. 
Along the way, the barge had to navigate through a series of narrow channels and bridges, with clearances of just a few feet in some places. But the real challenge came when it was time to transport the generator over land to its final destination. The route required the generator to be transported over a series of winding roads and narrow bridges, a journey that took several days and required the use of specialized heavy haul trucks and trailers. In the end, the generator arrived at its destination safely and on schedule, thanks to the skill and expertise of the transport team. With its installation at the New Jersey Power Plant, it began its new life as a vital component of the state's energy infrastructure. The Megalith, a boulder's journey to artistic glory. When it comes to moving massive objects, few things are as challenging as transporting a giant boulder. But that's exactly what the team at Emmert International was tasked with when they were hired to move a 340-ton granite megalith from a quarry in Riverside, California, to the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, LACMA. The boulder in question was no ordinary rock. Measuring over 20 feet tall and 32 feet wide, it was a massive piece of granite that had been carefully selected by artist Michael Heiser for his latest installation, Levitated Mass. The artwork would feature the boulder suspended over a 456-foot-long concrete trench, creating an awe-inspiring spectacle that would draw visitors from around the world. But before the boulder could take its place as the centerpiece of Heiser's installation, it had to be transported from the quarry to the museum, a journey that would cover over 100 miles and require a feat of engineering and logistics that had never been attempted before. To accomplish this, Emmert International designed and built a specialized transporter vehicle that would carry the boulder on its back like a giant tortoise. The transporter was over 200 feet long and 32 feet wide, with 176 wheels arranged in four rows of 44. It was powered by a pair of 500 horsepower engines and could crawl along at a top speed of just 7 miles per hour. The journey itself was a monumental undertaking, requiring months of planning and coordination with local authorities and utilities. The transporter had to navigate a series of narrow roads and tight turns, with clearances of just a few inches in some places. Along the way, it had to cross over bridges, navigate through tunnels, and even travel through the heart of Los Angeles, where it drew crowds of onlookers and media attention from around the world. But in the end, the boulder arrived at LACMA safely and on schedule, thanks to the skill and expertise of the Emmert International team. With its installation as the centerpiece of levitated mass, it took its place as one of the most iconic works of public art in the world. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.